Welcome back. Let's recap what we have done in the part one. To climb through the video tutorial on YouTube and set up five IP cameras at the edge, we connect those cameras to a PoE switch and use a fiber optic cable to link the PoE switch to a media converter and attach this media converter to his PoE NVR. But he saw only one IP camera on the monitor. The reason is his IP camera only allow one IP address to pass through this PoE port. He also doesn't want to change his PoE NVR. He still want to use this NVR. And his idea is add the PoE switch just next to this NVR and use the cable to connect this PoE port to this PoE port on the NVR. Let's see whether it works or not. Okay, now we have power this switch. We do need to remove the fiber optic cable from the media converter to this PoE switch. All right, and we also need this SAP transceiver. Let's install the SAP transceiver to this switch and connect the fiber optic cable to this SAP transceiver and use a short patch code to link this switch to this PoE NVR. Okay, let's pick the first port and connect to the port number one on the PoE NVR. Let's see whether we can see the live video or not. Let's wait for a while. Good, we are seeing the first camera. His idea is to use another cable to connect the port number two to this PoE NVR. Let's see what will happen. Okay, we see something happened. This sounds good, but actually it's not. Now we lost all the videos. We saw the video for once, but immediately we lost all the video. The reason is because now we have breached the TCP IP protocol. When we connect two switch use two cables, it will create broadcasting stone. This is that how it happens. It will send a message to this switch, the, this PoE switch on the PoE NVR, and the PoE NVR also will send a message to all these ports, including this port, which is connecting back to the PoE switch. So inventory create a dead loop, and it will crash the whole network. It's not going to work. But however, this idea did give us some clue to make this working. I had to send to this client. Now let's go to the whiteboard and see how we can make this system work. We do need to change the setting on these two switches and create a VLAN. So we are going to make this work. So the VLAN is the solution. VLAN is the virtual lens. The VLANs will isolate each other and it will not create the broadcasting stones. We can create five VLANs in this system. Let's say we got VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. We have five VLANs. And we assign the camera, first camera to the first VLAN and the last camera to the last VLAN. We are going to do the same configuration on the switch next to the PoE NVR. The, the camera, the first camera goes through the first VLAN on this switch and then to the second switch also go to the first VLAN. Inventory will connect the port number one to the first PoE port and connect the port number two to the second PoE port on the PoE NVR. Now let's move back to the demonstration board and configure these two switches. We need to create the VLANs on both switches. Let's start from the switch at the edge. I've connected this computer to the port number eight. It's the last port. It's better to use the last port. Otherwise, after we create the VLANs for some dedicated port, we lost the access to a built-in web server of this switch. The second thing is we would better to disconnect the fiber optic cable. Since both switches use the same IP addresses for the web server, so after we disconnect the cable, we will configure the built-in web server of this switch. All right, now let's get started. The IP address of the switch is 192.168.1.1. 
2.1. This is the login interface of the switch. If you don't see this interface, you probably need to check the network setting of your computer. Let's go to network and we find the TCP IP. Make sure the IP address is set to the subnet number 2 so your computer can talk to the switch. The default username and password is ADMIN. Now we go to the VLAN settings. First, we need to create the VLAN members. Since we have five cameras, we are going to create five VLAN members. One zero, two zero, three zero, four zero, and five zero. Then we go to the VLAN settings and assign the port to the dedicated VLAN. We are going to pick the port number one for VLAN one zero, and the VLAN type we use the access. Then we repeat it for the port number two. Port number three, port number four, and port number five. We also need to configure the port number nine, which is working with the fiber optic cable. But we need to choose the different VLAN type as a trunk port which allows all the VLAN to pass through so the camera can go to the switch and next to the POEMVR. We have done the setting for the switch at the edge. Now let's move to the switch next to the POEMVR. I've completed the VLAN setting on this switch. It's the exactly same configuration as the edge switch. Now let's remove this computer. And I'm going to use these two sharp patch codes to link this switch to this PoE port. Let's pick first port and connect the port number one on this PoE's MVR. Let's see what will happen. We are seeing the video from one of the camera. And we are going to use the second port and connect to this port number two on this PoE MVR. Alright, we saw the second camera. Let's see how the cameras work. It's live, so it's working perfectly. In this solution, we created different VLANs on both sides, and the cameras connect to the dedicated VLAN, and we also use multiple cables to connect this switch to this POEMVR. Eventually, we see the live video on the monitor. Alright, that's all. So today's video, if you have any question, please leave a message in the comment section below.